BizLine year-end special. Which country's leaders has President Park met this year? We will summarize various economic achievements President Park has made through her overseas trip. Korea and global economy have fallen into a swamp of low growth in 2014. We will summarize this year's economic issues at home and abroad and forecast next year. This year, the hot topic in the IT industry was definitely wearables. From smartwatches to smart wares, we will check out today's wearable services and technologies enabling them. Senior North Korean officials visit to South Korea. The UN's announcement of resolution on North Korea's human rights situation. Talks of Kim Jong-un's health problems. We will summarize North Korean news that have heated up the year of 2014. Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome to BizLine. Now, 2014 is almost at its end. So later in the show, we'll be taking a look back at the key economic trends of the year and also looking forward and making some predictions about the economic trends of 2015. But before we come to that, let's first take a look at President Park and hes global diplomatic outreach this year. She's expended thousands of air miles traveling to international summits and meeting her fellow global leaders. But has all this diplomatic bonhomie translated into any actual tangible economic benefits for Korea? Let's see. This year, President Park Geun-hye has unusually traveled quite a bit abroad. Amid her hectic overseas schedules, President Park mostly put the focus of her diplomatic activities on economy. She has been dashing towards broadening Korea's economic territory and strengthening Korea's diplomatic presence during this year in 2014. So what achievements have been made so far? 2014 marked the second year since President Park came to power. She has made seven overseas trips this year after traveling overseas five times last year. And today marks 670 days since she was inaugurated. Of the total, she spent about 80 days overseas or on the plane. President Park visited a total of 14 countries and spent nearly 50 days making international presidential trips. And calculations show she was overseas roughly one day a week this year. During the presidencies, former President Kim Dae-jung had made 23 international trips, President Noh Myun had made 27 international trips, and President Lee Myung-bak had made 49 overseas trips. But less than two years after she became president, she has already made more than 20 international presidential trips. The biggest reason President Park has been traveling very much abroad is to engage in economic diplomacy. The the biggest achievement of the president's economic diplomacy was reaching free trade deals. As Korea reached FTAs with China, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand and Canada, it has broadened its economic territory to 73.5% of the world, beefing up its presence. As a result, Korea has reached FTAs with 52 countries, up from 48 countries two years ago, and its trade portion with FTA partners has nearly doubled. 경제 영토라는 것을 한마디로 말해서 우리나라가 이제 뭐 기업이라든지 경제 활동을 통해서 아그 나라에서 이제 경제적 이익을 확보할 수 있는 시장을 확보했다는 의미입니다. 그래서 아 그런 측면을 고려한다면 올해 다양한 FTA를 체결함으로써 우리나라 경제 영토가 이전에 비해서 확대됐다는 측면은 우리나라의 좁은 내수 시장을 고려할 때 우리 어떤 경제적 이익을 더 많이 확보할 수 있는 시장 여건을 마련했다라고 평가할 수 있겠고요. Among them, her largest achievement is seen as the FTA with China, Korea's largest trading partner. Shortly before the opening ceremony of the APEC summit, President Park and Chinese President Xi Jinping declared the two countries have effectively reached a free trade agreement 30 months after the two sides began negotiations in May of 2012. 
이번 한중 FTA 협상 실질 타결은 글로벌 경기 회복이 지연되고 저성장이 저성장 국면이 지속되고 있는 세계 경제에도 반가운 소식이 될 것이라고 생각합니다. The latest FTA has provided an opportunity for the two countries to genuinely accelerate integration in all the areas such as trade, currency, investment and development. Moreover, during the latest APEC, President Park Geun-hye has expressed her support to the FTAAP led by China after reaching the FTA with China targeting real economic gains in the Asia Pacific region. 한중 FTA 같은 경우에 이제 농산물 부문에서는 중국으로부터 우리가 많은 양보를 얻어냈고 또 제조업 부문 수출에 그 활로를 열었다는 점에서 좀 성과가 있었다고 할수 있고 어, 아시아 태평양 지역의 지역 전체를 총괄하는 FTA 관련해서는 여러 가지 많은 대안들이 나왔었는데 이번에 중국이 어, APEC 정상회에서 그 아시아 태평양 지역 전체를 포괄한 FTA를 주장했는데 한국이 여기에 이제 적극적으로 찬성하고 어, 같이 어, 협조해 나가기로 하는 점에서 이제 FTA의 좀 어, 지역 전체 FTA의 주도권을 졌다라는 평가를 할수 있습니다. As a result, Korea has established itself as a base to advance into the global market and an FTA hub. But it still needs to connect to this revitalization of the economy through follow-up measures. Countries are in need of insights to grow mutually together amid rapidly changing global economic environments. 지금까지 뭐 강대국하고 FTA 그 다음에 지역에서 FTA 이런 것들을 되게 발빠르게 추진했고 지역 전체 무역 자유화라는 부분에서 이제 한국이 좀 주도적인 그런 역할을 하는 것들에 대해서는 상당히 긍정적인 평가를 할 만한데 2015년 그 국제 경제에 관한 전망을 봤을 때 지금 유가 하락이라는 부분 그 다음에 러시아 경제가 위험한 부분 그거에 따라서 어, 개도국 경제도 위험해지는 부분들이 있는데 한국이 무역을 많이 하고 있는 동남아 국가들도 이런 개도국 리스크에서 자유롭지 않은 상황이니까 는 이런 부분에 대해서 좀 슬기롭게 대처해 나가는 그런 경제 정책이나 운영 방안이 필요하다는 생각이 듭니다. Another achievement of President Park's economic diplomacy is that Korean companies have shown tangible increase in earnings. Korean companies have won 18 large-scale projects worth 50.2 billion U.S. dollars from eight different countries. They have also attracted foreign investment of 750 million U.S. dollars. By actively seeking alliances using Korea's technology and labor force, Korea and its counterparts have created real opportunities for mutually beneficial relationships. 이런 다양한 이제 경제적 행보를 통해서 FTA 경제 영토가 넓어지면 넓어질수록 그만큼 다양한 국가들과의 접점이 넓어지는 건 아니겠습니까? 그렇게 되면 자연히 외교적인 관계는 또 부차적으로 따라오게 되는 것입니다. 또 아, 다양한 외교적인 관계를 통해서 우리나라의 또 외교적 위상은 자연히 높아지는 것이고 우리나라의 또 브랜드 가치 같은 것들도 다 자연스럽게 높아질 수 있는 그런 어, 측면이 있기 때문에 이러한 어, 경제 영토가 넓어지는 것 자체는 상당히 우리나라에 있어서는 어, 경제적 이익뿐만 아니라 우리나라 위상이 높아지는 그런 효과를 어, 얻을 수 있는 그런 것이다 라고 말씀드릴 수 있습니다. President Park has been engaging in economic diplomatic policy, particularly focusing on small and medium-sized firms or SMEs. The evidence can be seen from composition of our economic delegations. One of the biggest changes made by the Park Geun-hye administration's presidential diplomacy was to sharply raise participation from smaller firms and economic delegations. She took the lead in promoting SMEs and mid-sized firms as well as large firms to provide them with real help. The outcome is confirmed by an increase in exports. According to the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy, exports by SMEs and mid-sized firms increased 5.7% in the first nine months of this year, contributing more to the country's exports than large firms, which saw their exports rising 1.6% in the cited period. Aside from this, Various economic achievements have also been made. The country has signed 19 memoranda of understanding to strengthen technology cooperation with advanced countries and agreed to jointly finance funds worth about 90 million US dollars in the industrial and energy sectors.
President Park's economic diplomacy has resulted in a large, tangible outcome in the past two years. The world's eyes are on Korea's future role as a global creative economic hub and central country in East Asia. Park 대통령께서 상당히 유연하게 또 강대국 사이에 있는 우리 입장임에도 불구하고 우리 어떤 이점을 최대한 활용을 해서 세계적인 어떤 그런 흐름을 주도하고 세계 교역을 선도하는 그러한 어떤 상당히 유연하고도 강한 그런 외교적인 입지를 구축했다고 평가할 수 있을 것 같습니다. 큰 틀에서 최소한의 경제적인 면에서는 남북 간의 음, 교류 협력이 좀 재개될 필요가 있고 그걸 계기로 해서 러시아, 중국을 연결하는 그래서 중앙아시아까지 나아가는 그런 어떤 유라시아 경제권을 아, 3년째부터는 좀 구체화해서 추진해서 가시적인 성과를 좀 보여주는 것이 필요하지 않는가 그렇게 생각합니다. Korea's economic territory has expanded and its diplomatic presence has further strengthened in the world. The outcome of economic diplomacy was abundant and Korea's status in the international community has substantially moved up. We look forward to President Park's economic diplomacy, which is set to accelerate during the remainder of our presidency. It's that time of year once again. The time of year when jolly Scandinavian gentlemen infiltrate our chimneys, when the rest of us get jolly merry at year-end parties, and when economic pundits ponder whether it's been a merry or miserable year for the economy. And today we have with us not one, but two distinguished scholars of economics. Dr. Kim in Chul from a professor emeritus of Sungung Kwan University, and our old friend Dr. Shin Se-don from Suk Myon Women's University, Thanks for being here. Welcome to Bizline. Well, I'm United glad to be. have me here. Thanks. Um, Dr. Kim, let me start with <coughs> you. In one word, describe to me how you think the Korean economy uh, behaved in 2014. Okay, the performance of the Korean economy for 2014 mm. is disappointing. Disappointing. Okay, I, many people would agree. Dr. Shin, what's your well, sense? Well, I would say it was, uh, it was confusion. Confusion for 2014 in, because in what sense? at the start of the year, m m government had so many different things in advance. They, they talked about the economic innovation, mm, economic economy, activation, yeah. economic recovery, mm. and all of a sudden they, they changed it to economic reform. So, mm. so many key words in 2014. That's why so I'm saying it's confusion. miscommunication at the top. Uh -huh. Okay, gotcha. Dr. Kim, again, same question. How do you think the global economy did um, over the year? I think the global economy um, made a, a moderate recovery, uh -huh. uh, except uh, the U.S. has been making uh, a bit of uh, progress. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll come to that in a little moment. Um, Dr. Shin, same question? Uh, less than expected because at mm. the start, many analysts believed the United States in, in, in the process of recovery, mm. and they believed the EU is also in the process of recovery. Right. So, in that, in that I should say a less than expectation. Yeah, particularly for Europe, I would suggest. And, and, and yeah. China too. Okay. So, I mean, what happened? Let, let's take a look at domestic issues first. Now, I mean, it's no secret that the Korean economy has been suffering from very, very stagnant domestic demand all the way back to the credit stroke credit card crisis um, of 2002. Did we see any way out of this quagmire of, of stagnant domestic demand um, over the course of 2014? The slow growth in the domestic demand mm. is everywhere, not only in Korea, but in many of the you know, countries in the world mm. because of slower growth. Slow, just everywhere. overall GDP growth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after the you know, 2008 uh, you know, global financial right. crisis right. and then the global recession you know, mm. started from the Euro land. Yeah. So everywhere, low growth, low consumption. Mm. As I see the way to get out of this uh, quagmire, yeah is to raise the uh, growth rate. The, the, what, the macroeconomic growth, GDP the GDP growth? growth? Rate, yeah. Yes. Okay, well let's, well, let's hope that'll happen. I think you know, projections for the following year are slightly rosier than this year. But let's come on to uh, another major bellwether, of course, of the economy is the market. Now, the Cosby in January the 1st was standing at 1961 points. Mm -hmm. About an hour ago, I checked the uh, today's figure. It's down to 1943 mm -hmm. points. So a pretty disappointing 
um, market mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. Why so? Well, the basic reason is the performances on the business sector has been pretty poor, especially, you know, the big companies the like ships, Samsung yeah. and, and Hyundai or POSCO mm. ha has shown a very poor uh, uh, results this year, but the poor results is not just maintain, I mean, restricted to the big companies. Mm. All the small and medium-sized firms has a similar trouble, mm. and Most the majority of which, of course, rely on the big firms. Majority yeah. of the you know businesses are showing I mean in, in losses. So mm. it is no wonder that the stock market has been stagnant. I think it's almost a miracle that they stay, stay the same level where it was. Okay, fair enough. But okay, let's come on to some of these flagship firms now. Samsung, of course, uh, this year has I think pretty much lost its long-term leader Lee Gun Hee to his uh, again long-term heart problems. I think he's out of management for good. Um, we saw earnings shock in the third quarter, and I think there's a widespread sense that Samsung now is a, a little bit rudderless. There's perhaps not a, a, a clear vision or strategy for the future. Is there a crisis at Samsung? I don't think Samsung is in crisis mm. because just because of the you know corporate governor, uh, governance. Mm. Um, we all know that uh, you know Group Chairman Egan He had a heart attack mm. in May, you know this past yeah, year, yeah. and he has been uh, and he went through the operation and right. he's been in the hospital for six mm. months now. But even say before he you know had a heart attack, he had been weak. Right, a very low time. profile chairman yeah, so indeed. So people yeah. had expected or had anticipated there would be some, you know, take over the succession uh, mm. by... A transition to his yeah, son. Yeah, transition by his EJ son, E.J. Right. Young. Yeah. And uh, about a year ago, he was promoted to the vice chair mm. of the Samsung. And uh, I'm sure he has already formed a uh, dream team, you know, of... Uh, a big the, executive brain trust. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the best minds and, and mm. you know, mm. high... Our level, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. Do, do you think this dream team has the right vision to steer Samsung into the future? I think so. Mm. Uh, of course, I mean the global environment is not favorable as mm. much favorable as it used to be, but uh, I mean still they you know face the you know the issues and the problems and, mm. and the hardships, but uh, you know they have ways to get around. So you're fairly bullish. Yeah. Um, let's move on, Dr. Shin, to, to the wider issue of um, governance and, and behavior of, of the Chebol chairman mm -hmm. and royal families. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, earlier this year, we saw uh, at Hyundai Motor made a very, very expensive buy of the POSCO land, which infuriated uh, a number of investors. And more recently, of course, we've seen this mm -hmm. rather uh, almost amusing scandal mm -hmm. at Korean Air, the, the Heather Cho's so-called Nutgate scandal. Um, do you sense that perhaps this year there's been a decreased tolerance within Korean society? Decreased? A decreased tolerance for misbehavior by Chebol royal families. As long as the economy is getting worse, you know, people's fury mm. against those uh, uh, high echelon uh, p rich people mm. will, will increase. So mm. in, in that respect, I think decreased tolerance is kind of a mild expression. A, a mild expression. Well, I mean... <laughs> Personally, I see this as actually a pretty positive development. Is this a positive development to, as I said, rein in some of the misgovernance that we've historically seen? Yeah, there, there are some senses of too extreme your reaction, especially, especially from the government side, mm. uh, because I think the government and prosecutors are overreacting uh, uh, mm. Because of some uh, political situations, the but re reflecting um, public I opinion, think nothing I'm sure. will change. Nothing will really? dramatically change in, in Korean mm. culture. So I think we, you know it's going to be a kind of a ripple effect, and uh, after a few months, I think you know all situation will return mm. to uh, the same situation as Th that's before. That's a disappointing prognosis, mm -hmm. Dr. Kim. Um, talking about the big Korean exporters, Hyundai, Samsung. Um, December this year, uh, Korea recorded its 34th consecutive monthly trade surplus, and the country's trade volume this year has reached um, the one trillion dollar level in record time. Is it impressive? Um, and if so, what is behind this? Of course, the absolute amount you yeah. know, is, say, uh, 9 or $10 billion is mm. a lot. But mm. uh, percentage-wise, it's only or a little less than 1% of total of overall, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, trade volume yeah. uh, in value. Mm. Korea has been importing uh, you know, crude oil, mm. uh, say, and the prices, of course, 1 now billion are, barrels per yeah. you know, 1 mm. bill, you know, billion barrels mm. a year. Okay. So if the price of you know, crude oil you know, falls by one dollar, you know Korea That's can mm. save yeah. 
one billion dollars. Mm. But also, of course, I mean, the, the world economy, as we were saying, has been more depressed than expected this year, and yet the trade volume uh, and export volumes have been reasonably solid. No? Right. Um, perhaps more than was expected. Yeah, that's a that's good thing uh, yeah. about the Korean economy. Yes. Yeah. Okay, still mean, the, the, right. Uh, the Dr. point Shane, is, yeah. you know, this year, it seems the volume has increased, I mean, record the mm. record level. But F if you look at the ever. speed of the yeah. growth in an export, it's almost 0% for this uh, what, year on year. year. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, the one thing that, you know, the trade... I mean, trade the volume uh, exceed over one trillion dollars seems to be uh, astonishing. But mm. this year, the growth rate is almost almost zero percent. The export growth, right? Uh -huh. right. And, and another point is that in, uh, during this year, the import gro growth is negative three percent. Mm. Of course, the, the oil price has has done a little bit of that. Yeah. But uh, I think the year. After this year, next, I think that the significant decrease in the current account surplus, mm. as well as the, the, the trade volume. Mm. Dr. Shin, I mean, you are the doctor of doom and gloom on this program, <laughs> not for the first time. And, and you've, you've been telling us for a long time, you right. think that the, the low yen is going to have a major impact, mm -hmm. the weak yen rather is going to have a, a mm -hmm. weak impact, uh, a major impact, sorry, on Korean exporters. Um, this year, the exports have remained reasonably steady, but with Shinzo Abe's recent um, electoral victory, it looks like we're going to have the, uh, the weak yen for a long time to come. Right. Is this a disaster for ex Korean exporters in the near future? According to my research, you yeah. know, the effect of yen will reach Korean economy, especially in the trade sector, after yeah. two years. Okay. Okay, yeah, Abe Shinjo took office about exactly two years ago, right. at the end of uh, uh, December uh, uh, 2012. So mm. uh, the, I believe ne the starting next year, we're going to see dramatic fall, not just trade against Japan, mm. but the trade in Europe, in, in America, in all over the world. We have to compete with the Japanese competitors. Mm. And uh, so I think major tsunami on trade weekend, is going yeah. to be felt from next year. Let's hope you're wrong, but we'll see. Right. <laughs> okay. okay, yeah, see. Let's move on. Um, Dr. Kim, China's interest rate cut. Um, Beijing has cut its interest rate, I think, for the first time in two years recently. Um, it's Korea's largest market, largest investment destination. Um, how significant is this step? Well, as you see, uh, to stimulate the investment mm. in China, yep. and the government, and the Chinese government, yeah. has decided to increase its, uh, the benchmark interest rate. Yep. And I mean, the lowered interest rate. And of course, I mean, there are... Uh, you know, two effects actually. Mm. One is positive and the other uh, negative. Um, it would uh, have a negative impact on the Korean economy in the sense, see, as Chinese you know, is gaining uh, or restoring its uh, competitive edge, mm. I mean, the industry is mm. getting more competitive, we will have a hard time in competing with China in the, in the world markets. Mm. But the, the other effect is that there's a uh, scale or the income effect as the Chinese economy is improving, you know, their income increases, and then their import you know, from Korea will increase. Mm. So there will be some positive effect and negative effect. Okay. Hopefully, uh, the net uh, positive effect would be for a Korea. A stronger Chinese economy is, is a good thing for Korea. Yeah. Right, fair enough. Um, let's move on to other global factors. Um, something we've talked about before, of course, is the, the Fed in the US cutting uh, quantitative easing. Um, again, my sense was that, uh, again, there was a lot of fear about this happening. It's finally happened. There was some capital flight back to the U.S., but mm -hmm. uh, I get the sense Korea was not that heavily impacted. What's your sense? Depending upon the perspective, I yeah. think uh, there, there's a su substantial outflow of capital from, from Korean capital markets already. Mm. Mm. Uh, under the expectation the United States will raise There's interest, interest rate. rate. Yeah. And uh, we know that the cur I mean, recent you know, announcement by Fed says that, that the rate will be raised in uh, sometimes in the May, April. Mm. So I think we know that the, the rate will be raised. The, the key point is how much they will raise. Mm. I think everybody uh, consensus is, is about a quarter percent. Mm. So if the you know, U.S. Yeah. It raises that, I think there is going to be a significant outflow of capital from Korean market. Mm. I mean, other emerging uh, markets have uh, suffered much heavier impact. Korea has been reasonably cushioned. Why, why well, is that? Well, yeah, that if Korean trade surplus yeah. reduces next year uh -huh. and the people, especially the foreign investors, loses confidence in Korean export sector, mm. then they might expect that the exchange of Korean won will depreciate mm. rather fast. 
And then and in that kind of situation, it, it's not it. the interest rate, yeah. it is the exchange rate movement right. that will drive the foreign capital mm. out, out, out of Korean market. Mm. And uh, another international genie which has sort of been released from the bottle just recently, of course, is the, the threat of a Russian default. Um, firstly, do you believe this is a realistic threat? And if so, what effect will it have on the international markets, notably Korea? Yeah, because Russia is uh, you know, heavily dependent on the exports of their energy, energy and the yep. oil and gas. Unfortunately to them, you know, the, the value of the price of the yeah. yen you know, plunged yeah. to say almost 50% mm. of what it was. And uh, it's really uh, damaging the Russian economy. Mm. And uh, it is inevitable that they would, uh, you know, face the uh, default in uh, pain. Inevitable. Yeah. Okay. Inevitable. What, what effect no, will that have? Well, yeah. I have a different opinion. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. If Russia falls, uh, yeah. it, it might, I mean, economic financial crisis will come if, if nothing happens, you know, but there are China, mm. there are many, you know, people or country kind of able to uh, avoid uh, something happening kind of in Russia. Yeah. So I think uh, the help will coming from uh, mm -hmm. maybe the China Chinese and also United really. States will not will not tolerate the global financial crisis. Right. So I th and somehow I think mm -hmm. that the it's be Russian handled. crisis will be contained. Yeah. So what you're, you're also suggesting we may even see some kind of financial support from the U.S. despite the fact that the U.S. is sanctioning well, Russia. I, mean, I was going to say, mm. I mean, it was inedible, yeah. in, in, inevitable unless something is occurring. Mm. Say I would, uh, you know, uh, speculate or I would uh, guess that the, the I mean, OPEC nations would mm. agree to you know, to maintain, to but, keep the price but at don't you uh, think OPEC level. Has, has lost the plot? Well, we can only guess, but, yeah. um, you know, they're also hurting themselves, too. They are, yeah. So they can't really lower the price unlimitedly, you know. So mm. as they see, I mean, because if Russia, you know, defaults mm -hmm. on the loans, all others will be unhappy, I mean, and yeah. miserable. The other countries will be affected negatively. So, yeah. I mean, the countries in the, OP, I mean, the OPEC, uh, I mean, the export, uh, oil exporting countries, mm. as well as importing countries, they all, you know, I mean, get together to do something about, you know. This can't go on. <laughs> well, we shall see. Um, we've just been talking international issues. Let's bring this back, final question, to domestic. Um, forecast for this year's year-on-year uh, -year GDP growth, uh, hovering through 3.5%. Mm -hmm. What do you think this year's final growth figure will well, be? Well, if you look at, you know, the first the three quarters, mm. the growth rate has coming down from 3.9 to mm. 3.2 on the yep. third quarter. Yeah. If that kind of trends persist, I In think the fourth, the fourth quarter. quarter will be very, uh, you know, uh, close to 3%. So if you average, the, the percentage will never, uh, it's going to be very difficult the annual rate will, higher th will be higher than 3.5%. Right. Mm. The, the important thing is the trend. The mm. trend has been coming down mm. throughout the year, and it means that the next year is going to have a very low economic growth. Mm. Dr. Kim? Korea GDP uh, growth would be uh, between, uh, I mean, around 3.5%, okay. a little less than uh, you know, what I had been anticipated or expected Earlier in the year, beginning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because we were fortunate in, uh, you know, with the, the low I and mean, the falling uh, prices in uh, crude oil. Dr. Kim, Dr. Shin, always good to see you. Thanks for being on BizLine and Happy New Year to both of you. Happy nice New to be Year here. to you. Happy New Year to you. Thank My you. pleasure. Okay, always good to have you guys here. In 2014, a wide range of new ICT devices and services hit the market. Most promising among them was the wearable device. Yet this technology remains in its infancy. So what is its future potential? And from flexible screens to flexible power sources, how far have the technologies which enable wearables developed? Let's take a look. Smartphones brought computer systems to our hands and our lives were never the same. The next era of computing will be wearable. Wearable, which was the buzzword that dominated the IT world in 2014, is growing fast amid expectations for the broad and extensive role in integrating computers with our bodies. Mr. Chang hyun Soo is at work. Mr. Zhang's line of work requires him to be on the move all the time. 
it had been stressful and a hassle to check whether he had his phone with him. But these days, he needs not. He talks on the phone or checks his messages through a Bluetooth headset. When he needs to hand out his business card, he places the client's smartphone on his suit, embedded with the NFC function, and the data is then transmitted onto the phone. I have to give my name, but I have to give my name a little bit. I have to give my name a little bit. I have to give my name a little bit. These wearable devices have made Mr. Chang's life more efficient and convenient. The wearable devices on his head, wrist, and clothing can replace smartphones. Our clothes or fashion items' computing power is added to the meaning of it. Through this, our body's changes in appearance, or data, 사용자가 바라보고 있는 시선 등의 정보들을 좀더 손쉽게 수집을 할 수가 있게 되고요. 사용자들은 또 메시지나 전화 같은 것들을 보다 즉각적으로 빠르게 확인할 수 있게 됩니다. The Apple Watch you can scroll through the list and you can do all of this. The wearable revolution started with the wrist. It first was developed as a secondary gear to smartphones to give our hands more freedom. Wrist devices have now become advanced enough to function as independent smart systems. All global smartphone brands, Samsung, Apple, and LG, have entered the smartwatch market this year. They are branching out to other wearable fields as the new growth engine for consumer electronics. Wearable 기기나 스마트 기기와 연동해서 사용하거나 혹은 독립 기기로 사용함으로써 모바일 사용 경험을 확대하고 또 일상 생활을 더욱 편리하고 가치 있게 만들 수 있어서 해당 시장은 앞으로 빠른 속도로 성장할 것으로 예상됩니다. Wearables that had been focused on the wrist have become diverse in what they can perform and where they are worn. These eyeglasses augment reality. A ring on the finger shows phone messages or emails. The smart belt helps you correct your posture and aid you during workouts. GPS embedded smart shoes guide you to your destination via vibration. Anything that goes on your body, from head to toe, can turn into wireless computing or telecommunications devices. The scope of the application of wearables that can go on any part of the body is unfathomable. One global market researcher believes the global demand for wearable devices will more than double than that of the current size to reach 12.6 billion US dollars by 2018. Wearable devices are fast advancing thanks to breakthrough developments in parts and materials. Power sources for devices like transparent and flexible electrodes are under active development. 이제 디스플레이를 플렉시블하게 만든다든지 입력을 위한 기판을 플렉시블하게 만든다든지 또는 거, 거기에 전원을 공급하는 배터리를 플렉시블하게 만드는 기술은 핵심 기술이라고 볼수 있고요. 어, 또뭐 스킨 패치 같은 그런 신체 부착 시스템의 경우는 그 신축성이 또 중요합니다. 그래서 우리 전자 피부처럼 이렇게 늘릴 수도 있고 당기고 뭐 굽힐 수도 있는 그런 신축성 있는 제품 소재 개발이 필요한 것 같습니다. Electronics companies are in a race to develop new materials to allow and enhance the flexible factor in consumer electronics. To power flexible displays, transparent electrodes or conducting films that can carry electricity without getting in the way of the lighting source is essential. Indium tin oxide, made out of metallic element rate in the Earth's crust, had been typically used to make transparent electrodes. But the solid solution is brittle, proving unsettling and unsuitable for flexible devices. 기존에는 지금 이제 ITO라는 인듐 틴 옥사이드를 주로 이렇게 사용하고 있었어요. 근데 이제 인듐 틴 옥사이드가 상당히 좋은 장점이 있는데 문제는 인듐 틴 옥사이드는 지금 이제 플렉서블 하는데 상당히 좀 어렵습니다. 향후에 모든 그 디바이스가 이제 폴더형, 스트레처블형 또는 접근하 말수 있는 거. 그렇게 생각해 보면은 이제 ITO의 특성을 나타내면서 플렉서블이 가능한 새로운 물질도 필요하고 새로운 그 적용도 필요한 거죠 지금 향후에는 플렉서블로 가려고 하면 어, 실버 나노 와이어나 이런 그래핀, CNT 
이런 하이브리드를 개발할 수밖에 없습니다. A local research team has been successful in turning out highly bendable, conductive, and transparent electrodes by combing nanowires with graphene oxide. Recently available was electrodes fabricated with silver nanowires and carbon nanotubes that offer flexibility and transparency without sheet resistance. Once commercialized, the efficient, transparent, and flexible electrodes will likely accelerate the development and expansion of wearable devices. 현재 이제 가장 많이 사용되고 있는 휘어지는 스마트폰 그리고 접을 수 있는 태양 전지 그런 쪽 투명 전극에 지금 바로 사용될 수 있을 것이라고 기대를 하고 있고요. 그 향후에는 이제 어, 입을 수 있는 그런 전자 소자나 안 그러면 이제. 사람의 몸에 심을 수 있는 그런 통합 센서 등을 만드는 데 사용할 수 있을 것으로 기대하고 있습니다. Wearable technology is therefore closely associated with the advance in compatible power sources. Research is focused on turning rigid rechargeable batteries into ones that are adaptable, thinner, lighter and energy saving. The world's first bendable paper battery was developed by a local science team. 기존 종이 전지는 전극 혹은 분리막 거기 일부를 그 종이를 이용해서 도입해 보겠다 하는 약간의 좀 기초적인 수준에 머문 상황이었습니다. 근데 저희가 요번에 개발한 거는 아 어, 나노 그러니까 종이 중에서도 나노셀룰로스라고 하는 그거를 통해서 분리막을이라는 소재를 만들었고 그 분리막과 전극을 일체형으로 만들었다는 점이 가장 큰 차이점이 되겠습니다. Because of the removal of metal sheets, the battery is paper thin, folding, bending, and twisting like a paper layer without any interruption in the power supply. It's expected to draw immense interest from the IT industry for wearable applications. Flexible display do 상용화 되고 있고요. 또 수많은 이제 센서들도 이제 상용화가 되고 사용이 될수 있고 성능도 굉장히 뛰어납니다. Wearable computer, 뭐 wearable 제품 이런 것들이 만들어질 수 있는 이제 기반이 다져진 상태라는 생각이 듭니다. A variety of wearable devices introduced by global electronics brands has caught consumers' attention. But there are many areas that need to be solved before companies can persuade consumers to actually buy and wear them. Various supplementary technologies like data processing and sensor solution must be accompanied. 어, 이미 스마트폰 시대에도 전자파 이슈가 상당히 부각이 되었는데요. 웨어러블의 통신칩이 추가가 된다면 신체에 좀더 가까이 있는 기기이기 때문에 그런 전자파 이슈로부터 더 자유롭지 못할 수가 있습니다. 더불어 전자기기라면 항상 동반이 되는 발열 문제들도 상당 부분 더 개선이 되어야 할 것이라고 보입니다. Wearables will likely be the next big consumer electronic device after TVs, computers, and smartphones. Wearables will be the most convenient and smart devices in a wired and connected society. 최근에 와서는 이제 뭐 헤드 마운트 디스플레이에 가상 현실을 갖다 붙인다든지 또는 뭐 이제 재활용 그 글로브를 만들어서 이렇게 손동작을 뭐 지원해 준다든지 웰리스나 뭐그 헬스케어 쪽에서 어 웨어러블 기술이 굉장히 많은 이제 제품이 나타날 것 같고요. 저희가 현명하게 잘 활용한다면 정말 그 인류의 편익을 완전히 혁신적으로 증진시키는 그런 기술이 될수 있다고 생각합니다. The wearable war has begun with global companies jumping into the race. The advance in wearable and supplementing technologies will likely change the paradigm in the IT sector. Inter-Korean relations in 2014 follow their usual up and down trajectory. In March, Seoul announced that unification would be like hitting the jackpot. In October, a visit by the highest level North Korean delegation ever to come to South Korea raised the possibility that maybe, just maybe, a breakthrough was imminent. But it all came to nothing after Kim Jong-un disappeared from public view following apparent health problems. So, where does this leave us? Well, let's take a look. North-South relations in 2014. It has been three years since inexperienced and youngest son of Kim Jong-il succeeded to the throne of the world's only surviving hereditary dictatorship. 
There had been hopes that West-educated Kim Jong-un would be a different leader than erratic Stalinist father Kim Jong-il. He proved to be as bold, cruel, and unruly. We look back at North Korean issues that have been making international news and topic headlines throughout the year. The United Nations Security Council voted on December 18th to place the North Korean human rights situation on its agenda to refer the North Korean leader to the International Criminal Court for Crimes Against Humanity. The world body has been condemning human rights abuses in North Korea annually since 2005, but never has been as aggressive to demand bringing the offenders to justice. But only few think the resolution would be put into action. UN 안보리가 이제 결정을 해야만 효력을 발휘합니다. 그렇기 때문에 UN 안보리의 주요한 만장일치로 처리가 되기 때문에 이 핵심 당사국 중에 하나라고 할수 있는 중국과 러시아가 반대할 가능성이 높고 그럼 이제 회부는 어렵죠. Despite all the brave face and rhetoric, the fact that North Korea has been mentioned for referral to International Criminal Court must have touched a nerve in Pyongyang. North Korea sent Foreign Minister Ri Su-yong to the UN General Assembly in September. It was the first time in 15 years since a North Korean foreign minister stood on the UN podium. 김정은 제일 위원장 체제에 대한 상징적 타격의 의미가 있다고 봐야 되고 실질적으로 어, 북한 체제, 김정은 체제의 인권 개선과 관련돼서 직접적인 채찍의 효과는 거의 없다. 다만 상징적으로 김정은 체제의 인권 문제에 대한 국제사회의 환기, 그 속에서 북한에 대한 압박, 그러한 성격의 의미는 분명히 있다고 볼수 있습니다. North Korea released three Americans who had been held prisoners in North Korea between September and November as an overture to Washington. Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un has also been aggressive in the charm offensive toward South Korea. In a New Year's address, he articulated hopes for improved inter-Korea relationships. But no actual progress has been made in easing tensions and standoff between the two Koreas. Speaking at the former East German city of Dresden during her visit to Germany in March, South Korean President Park Geun-hye laid a concrete roadmap for unification agenda. 핵무기와 전쟁의 공포로부터 자유로운 한반도, 자유와 평화, 번영이 넘치는 한반도를 건설해야 합니다. Pyongyang, however, condemned the declaration that included a proposal for economic and humanitarian exchanges, calling it a plot to overthrow its regime. 북한으로서는 이것이 선 비핵화 이후에 어, 본인들의 안전 보장을 할수 없는 거다. 그리고 이게 결국 국제사회 제재 연장선이다. 어, 이렇게 생각하는 측면이 관측될 수 있었고요. 어, 또 북한이 좋아할 만한 어떤 어, 보따리죠. 금강산 관광. 등 눈에 보이는 가시적인 지원은 다 빠져 있다고 생각했기 때문에 북한은 뭐 이것을 내용 면으로 보나 또는 어 어떤 실질적인 면이나 자신들의 정권에는 그다지 유익한 것이 없다고 생각해서 이후부터 노골적으로 거부감을 표시했다고 볼수 있겠습니다. Then North Korea has done something out of the ordinary. Senior North Korean officials flew directly into South Korea and made a surprise visit to the closing ceremonies of the Incheon Asian Games with just a day's notice. They were Hwang byung so who is just second to Kim Jong-un in the army and power hierarchy, Che ryong hye a senior party secretary who acted as a special envoy for Kim in recent Russian visits, and Kim Young-gun, who is the party secretary in charge of South Korean policy. During a launch meeting at the Blue House, the two Koreas agreed to hold the second round of high-level meetings. The mood quickly soured after North Korea fired arms to shoot down balloons carrying anti-Pyongyang leaflets launched by South Korean activists. 2차 고위급 접촉의 불발은 현상적으로는 어, 삐라 전단지 살포 문제에 대한 북측의 반발 아, 이것이 가장 컸다고 봐야 되고 아, 그러나 본질적으로는 남북 당국의 상호 불신이 해소되지 않는 상황에서 어, 2차 고위급 접촉의 그 가능성들을 너무 쉽게 남북 당국이 합의했다. 이 같은 행위가 국제 사회에 전파가 되면서 최고 지도자의 전반적인 이미지가 국제 사회에 손상되는 것에는 북한이 상당히 민감히 느끼고 있다. 
이렇게 볼수 있는 거죠. As a result, the two Koreas have failed to hold another round of high-level talks and make progress in inter-Korean relationships this year. North Korea has turned more emotional and acutely responsive to international and South Korean moves and attitudes. Observers believe it underscores the fragility of the Kim Jong-un regime. 아버지나 할아버지와 달리 예, 김정은의 정권은 준비 안된 급조된 정권이고 아직 권력 기반이 확고하다고 볼수 없기 때문에 대북 전단 문제 같은 경우도 우리가 보기에는 뭐 사소한 것 같지만 김정은의 취약한 권력 기반을 가진 김정은 입장에서 볼 때는 그런 전단 자체도 사실 실질적인 위협이 된다고 판단을 한 거라고 할수 있어요. Rumors around Kim Jong-un in October also stemmed from doubts about his hold on power. Various speculation arose about his whereabouts when he suddenly disappeared from public eye for 41 days. Some believed he might have been suffering heart complications, a family disease that killed his grandfather and father, or a stress-related illness. Others speculated he could be detained by opposing forces after a military coup. 특히나 이제 올해 김정은의 건강에 관심이 있었던 건 뭐냐면 김정은이 지금 집권 3년 차거든요. 그럼 엄밀히 보면은 김정은이 그 권력을 완전히 장악했다고 보기는 굉장히 어려운 상황이에요. 그런 상태에서 김정은이 건강 상태까지 나빠진다 그러면 그건 김정은의 북한 권력 체계 전반의 불안전성을 의미하기 때문에 아, 김정은의 건강이 올해 좀 이슈가 됐던 거고요. Kim has been trying to win the military's favor and establish his own inner circle in the military by handing out military order insignia. He removed most of the confidants of his father and replaced them with his own men. Yet he does not seem to be entirely secure. 과거의 권력 엘리트들은 재건해진 숙청에서 그 흔들어 놓고 새로운 김정은의 측근들이 그 부상하는 과정이라고 볼수 있는데 뭐 잦은 군부에 대한 어떤 강등과 복권이 반복이 됐고요. 우발적이고 혹은 어떤 그 충동적인 형태 인사가 굉장히 많았어요. 그리고 어떤 공포 정치도 강화됐고 그렇기 때문에 사실은 이 자발적인 충성이나 동의를 이끌어내는 상황은 아닌 것 같다. North Korea would have been frustrated by the slow progress at home and abroad in relieving its troubles. It may have to re-examine whether it was doing things the hard way. 전반적으로 2014년 김정은의 어떤 그 권력 기반을 강화하는 노력에도 불구하고 김정은 정권 혹은 북한 체제 전반의 내구력은 약화되고 있다 이렇게 볼수 있습니다. 가장 큰 걸림돌은 북한 핵 문제입니다. 핵 문제에 대한 대화 틀에는 북한이 먼저 어느 정도 양보를 통해서 좀 나올 수 있고요. 국제사회도 그렇게 나온 북한을 기회는 이때다 하고 압박하기보다는 좀 그에 상응하게 핵보다는 경제 발전과 국제사회에 발을 맞출 수 있게 좀 단계적으로 나가는 태도도 중요할 것 같습니다. Despite Kim Jong-un's efforts to reinforce his power in 2014, the overall viability of the North Korean regime appears to have weakened. North Korea's imperative task to respond to international pressure on human rights conditions and stabilize the regime will have to be dealt with next year. And that's all we have time for on BizLine this week and this year. But do join us again next week, please, for our New Year's special. What will be the key issues confronting the Korean economy in 2015? Well, we'll be analysing what some of those issues may be, and also suggesting some policy directions to help drive the economy forward in the year ahead. We'll also be looking at some of the most promising upcoming technologies of the year ahead. These include 4D printers and biomimetic robots. And we'll be presenting our list of the top 10 ICT issues that we think will be grabbing your attention in the year to come. So, do join us then, but that's all for now. I'm Andrew Salmon, this was BizLine. Thank you for watching and have a very happy new year. Goodbye.